Howdy folks, welcome back to Breath Edge with the Mighty Jingles. We're still lost in space, we're still mostly clueless. Well, I do know what it is that I need to survive, I'm just not entirely sure how to go about getting it. In order to get through the radiation zone to the survival shuttle, I'm going to need an enhanced spacesuit, and I'm also going to need to improve my helmet. Now for the helmet I'm going to need glass, which I so far haven't been able to find, and for the spacesuit I'm going to need lead paint for radiation protection. And I've got one piece of lead paint, but I'm going to need two. Oh, incidentally, I figured out where to get the second light bulb that I'm going to need in order to make the scanner tool. It's down here, next to the guy who was murdered by his jealous lover in the shockingly pink. Yeah, he knows what he the did. Yeah, anyway, so uh, the scanner is actually useful. Although you definitely don't need it in order to survive, it does allow you to unlock additional items of equipment. For example, in the bathroom, there's a first aid kit. You use the scanner on it, it gives you the blueprint and make your own first aid kits. As well as that, there is also one other scannable item of equipment in the shuttle. And it's this thing, the pot plant. And once you've scanned the pot plant, a whole bunch of other categories suddenly become available in your build menu. Although they're not populated yet, but it should give you some idea as to what sort of thing you can expect in future content updates. We've got walls, floors, ceilings, modules, blocks, decor and vehicles. And in fact, while out exploring, I came across this, which can also be scanned for the blueprint for a big TV. What a waste of perfectly good beer. That's not all that's out here. Check this out. Mortal Wombat. <laughs> Be careful. Games provoke cruelty, because according to statistics, most criminals played them at least once. All criminals drink water, blinked, and used toilet paper, which makes it possible to draw an unequivocal conclusion about your criminal inclinations. All right, that's enough messing around. It is time to get some paint so I can build this enhanced spacesuit. And in order to do that, I am going to need two oxygen stations. Handily enough, the game does actually tell you where to go in order to get paint and glass. It's just getting there that's a bit of a challenge. You're definitely going to require the oxygen station blueprint. It's nearly a kilometer away and there's just no way my oxygen supply is going to last that long without some form of backup. Technically, I suppose you could take a bunch of oxygen candles along with you, but if you do what I did, and you don't have oxygen stations, and you're instead relying on oxygen candles, it's going to take a couple of trips and a lot of oxygen candles. What are you talking about, Jingles? Well, watch and you'll see. Okay. Oxygen supply is about to expire. We're going to pop an oxygen station here and top up. And this is well over halfway to the paint supply. Most of which has frozen and solidified after getting blown out of that airlock. So hopefully we're going to find some form of liquid paint that's still intact somewhere in there. A large accumulation of toxic colorant has been discovered. If you find a container with this substance, you may receive irreversible brain damage and also improve the anti-radiation protection of the spacesuit. Irreversible brain damage is a risk I'm prepared to take. We're nearly there. Let's face it. If I was to suffer irreversible brain damage, most people probably wouldn't notice anyway. It looks like a tank with paint. Indeed it does. However, I'm running out of oxygen again, so this is where we're going to set up our second oxygen station. Just pop it into a tool slot and deploy. And now, well, I don't exactly have unlimited opportunities to explore in here, but I can last out here a good 10 to 15 minutes. And that is a paint tank. Hooray! Give me some paint. Drill required. Oh, you've got to be kidding. As you can see, if I didn't have the oxygen stations and I was instead relying on oxygen candles, this could have been a very, very expensive and possibly one-way trip. 
as it happens, there is plenty of lead lying around this place. I'm just going to top off my oxygen supply. There are also a couple of pieces, although there aren't many, of free-floating paint just flying around the place. And if you were to dig around for long enough, you'd probably be able to find them. There's some lead. Oh, there's a big chunk of lead, so we're going to smack this up. We need the lead, obviously, for making lead paint. But we also need paint. So I am going to have to go back to the shuttle, make a drill, and come back. But there's more than enough lead and paint here for our purposes. Well, actually, I don't necessarily have to go back. I mean, a drill's always going to be useful. There is a lot more paint back there. But I did pick up one spare piece of paint just floating around the place. And there's plenty of lead. And I do already have one piece of lead paint. And I only need two uh, to make the enhanced spacesuit. So I could just go ahead and do that right now. Let's have a look. There we go. Lead paint. There's one. Okay, I can't make any more because I only found one piece of paint, but I did find a piece of red paint earlier. There we go. So, I know I'm going to need a roll of fabric. What else am I going to need? Aluminium. Well, alright. I've got plenty of aluminium in storage. I still can't make the helmet because I haven't got any glass yet, but aluminium is no problem. There we go. Four pieces of... Sorry, America. Aluminium. Uh, <laughs> there's the enhanced spacesuit. Remember to equip it this time, Jingles. Yeah, okay. To the inventory. Hooray! One enhanced spacesuit. With increased radiation protection. We're still not quite there yet. I still need the helmet. And for that, I'm going to need glass. Although first, we're going to get this drill constructed, go back and loot all the remaining paint I can get my hands on, because it's rare as rocking horse shit. And you never know when you're going to need more. Although I have to admit, with all of the effort that it took me to go back, get the materials required to make a drill, and then come back and actually start harvesting paint from the tanks, I kind of feel vaguely cheated that I can only actually get two pieces of paint from a tank of that size. There's a bit floating around. We'll grab that and that. I really needn't have bothered. There are two tanks in here that actually contain unfrozen paint. Don't ask why the frozen paint that's floating around in space is equally useful, because reasons. And from those two tanks I was able to get precisely four pieces of paint. Just floating around in this area, I found another three. So, yeah, whatever. Anyway, it's all useful stuff, I'm, I'm sure I'll need it later on. Next on the agenda, I need to make that enhanced helmet. For that, I'm going to need glass. Now, I do have a waypoint marker telling me, once again, where it is that I actually need to go in order to get the glass. But, it's even further away than the paint, so once again it's definitely going to be a two, possibly even a three oxygen station job. But on the way to that waypoint, you can see up ahead I've already deployed one oxygen station. But en route to that waypoint, via the oxygen station, we're encountering an environmental hazard, a freezing danger. I have no idea why this particular area of open space is so much colder than all of the other areas of open space that I've been aimlessly floating through. It just is. Now, as far as I've been able to figure out, it doesn't actually affect your health bar. You're not going to take any damage from floating through an area of space that's significantly colder than everywhere else, but what it will do is start freezing up your helmet. And when your helmet completely frosts over, you're basically blind. And that's not good. When you're floating through space with a 75 second oxygen supply and you can't tell which way you're going or where your nearest oxygen resupply is. So, while the cold isn't going to directly kill you, it can still kill you. A cemetery of rescue shuttles. The evacuation zone is very close, but the amount of debris is far from encouraging. Well, the evacuation zone isn't exactly very close. You can see by the fist icon up ahead, it's still a kilometre away. But, we have made it to the shuttle graveyard where we're going to find a source of glass. It is highly recommended that you not touch the glass fragments with your hands. Tiny splinters are able to pierce the thin fabric of the spacesuit and cause a slight death attack. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the other thing about picking up pieces of broken glass. 
don't. <laughs> You'll rupture your spacesuit. For this, we're going to need the grabber tool. Luckily, I have one. So, glass, where is it? Can anybody see a piece? Is that a piece of glass? It's a piece of glass. All right. I can't remember how many bits I need. So we're basically just going to grab everything. I'm sure I'm not going to need more than one or two. There is a lot of glass just floating around in this area. Far, far more than I'm going to need to make a space helmet. But given that, well, we have seen that at some point in the future, we're going to be able to construct base modules, decor, and even vehicles. I'm probably going to be needing a lot of this. Maybe not soon, but at some point. And that's just used up all the durability on the grabber, so that's all the glass I'm going to be picking up here for now. i top up my oxygen supply. And you can see up ahead of me, just over 900 metres away, is the waypoint to the evacuation shuttle, which means I'm probably going to require at least another two oxygen stations in order to make it there. Of course, the first thing I'm going to have to do is go back to the shuttle now that I have my supply of glass and actually build the enhanced helmet, which is going to give me the radiation protection that I'm going to need to get there without frying. But it was while I was in the process of looting this place for just about everything useful that I could scavenge that that cold danger started to make its presence felt. I need to head back to the shuttle and quick while I can still see which way I'm going. See, this is what I was talking about. While I still have some vision, I just centred on the second oxygen resupply station, farted good and hard into the accelerator, <laughs> and uh, blasted my way to the oxygen station. You see, this is what I was talking about. The cold isn't going to kill you. Your suit is, well, presumably has enough insulation to prevent you from actually dying to the cold. But this shitty helmet has completely frozen up. So while the cold isn't going to kill you, because you can't see where you're going, it can get you killed. Well, we've made it. We were able to get our bearings on this oxygen station before a helmet completely froze up. Right, so now that we're no longer in any immediate danger of dying, let's get back to the shuttle and get this enhanced helmet built. And we now have everything that we need. And... Due to the high toxicity level of the renewed there it is. space suit, the probability of your death from radiation is now lower than the probability of death from the suit itself. In this regard, you can fly to the evacuation point. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> okay. So, I'm not going to die of radiation poisoning, but I might die from toxins inhaled from all the lead paint that I've just covered my helmet and suit with. Fantastic. Right, the only thing that's stopped us now is an oxygen supply. We've got two oxygen staging posts leading to the shuttle crash zone, so we can get there without any problems. But from that point, it's just under a kilometre to the evacuation shuttle, so we're going to need at least another two oxygen stations. Or two oxygen stations and a healthy supply of oxygen candles. The only real problem I have now is deciding what to take and what to leave behind, because those oxygen stations use up a metric ass ton of inventory space. So all of my wiring, plastic, aluminium, thick electrical tape, steel, glass, lead paint... I can't take it all with me and carry enough oxygen stations to make sure I actually get to the evacuation shuttle alive, so I'm going to have to make some hard choices about what exactly to leave. So I'm going to go with two oxygen stations, which I figure is the bare minimum that I'm going to need. Now, of course, making a second oxygen station is going to use up one of those oxygen candles as well. So I figure I am playing this pretty close to the knuckle with two oxygen stations and just one spare oxygen candle. I'm going to have to take every tool available as well, because I don't know what tools I'm going to need when I get there. I'm almost certainly going to need something. And I would hate to make it all the way to the evac shuttle, but only to find out that I have to go back and collect a scanner and do the whole thing again. So, I've made my choices. We're on our way to the evac shuttle. Hopefully, this should be it. 
made it to the first oxygen station, which has barely been used. I think I've only used it twice, once on the way there and once on the way back. Helmet's starting to freeze up. Can't afford to hang around. Oxygen topped up. A good healthy fart into the accelerator. And we're doing 20 meters per second on the way to the second oxygen tank. Looks like we're warming up slightly. The frosting on the helmet is abating. And we're going to make it to the second oxygen tank with no problems whatsoever. It's the third and fourth that are going to be problematic. Well, the third and fourth themselves aren't going to be problematic at all. I'll just keep going until I run out of oxygen, deploy the third station, top off, keep going until I run out of oxygen, deploy the fourth station, then keep going and hopefully reach the evacuation shuttle. For safety, you really should be doing this with three oxygen stations, because what happens if there's a lot of stuff that I need to do when I reach the evacuation shuttle before I can actually evacuate? Ideally, I should have a fifth oxygen station ready to deploy at the evacuation point. The presence of such an amount of cooling gel is strange. Such a composition was outdated more than ten years ago and is not produced on any planet. Yeah, that is a lot of frozen coolant gel. See, the problem, of course, is the oxygen stations take up so much inventory space. So I'm relying on having enough oxygen topped off from the fourth station, plus the safety margin of having one oxygen candle, which will give me an extra 40 seconds. Ahead. The evacuation should be led from there, but there are no signals or movement detected in this area. Probably everyone died. This suit is such a cheerful bastard. <laughs> Actually, you know, we should be okay. It's just about 500 metres to go to the evacuation shop, and I've covered about 500 metres since the last station. And top off. So that last oxygen station, I should be able to deploy reasonably close to the evacuation shop. So this, this should be fine. Yeah, this is fine. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Jingles. To, oh, hang on. Oh, what does she want now? What's up, tits? What's this? Admin code? Press button? Kill all passengers? What? What? What's she going on about? With such an accent, the incorrect localization sounds extremely convincing. The information on the captain's bridge is classified in the database. Therefore, it is recommended to ignore this value of advice and act according to the situation. Oh, come on, I don't need additional complications now. I'm 200 metres away from the evac shuttle. Ah, oh, god damn it. Bollocks. Right, we're nearly there. Let's, let's focus on not dying. Oh, radiation hazard. That's okay, I've got the enhanced suit. Let's pop the oxygen candle so I can actually get close enough to deploy the oxygen station right here. So this is ideal. Two oxygen stations are actually all you need. The captain's bridge was badly damaged, but the main systems are still functioning properly. Oh, there's actually an oxygen supply here. So I don't actually need the fourth oxygen station at all. Hooray! Right, what's this? Okay, so we need to conduct some repairs. I'm going to need a handy scrapper. That's alright, I've got a handy scrapper. I can just stay in place long enough. Get this thing fixed. Power supply active. Anything else? Anything else that needs to be hit with my hammer in order to fix it? Because Russian. <laughs> the door is locked. If you manage to get inside, there is a chance to send a distress signal to the nearest planet, or at least kick the course with the captain who allowed this to happen. Okay. What do I need to unlock the door? I need a key. All right, and a password. Um, come on, come on. <laughs> I told you that chicken was going to be useful. Okay, we've got the key. Oh, I need to equip the key, I think. Right, we've nearly done it, guys. This is it. Key equipped. Use key. Here it comes. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Welcome back aboard, Captain. System loading. System active. Engines active. Three, two, one. And where are you? 
Really? Fuck my life. Seems it will be a long day. I demand a refund. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Boys and girls. That was episode one of Breath Edge. Episode two and hopefully three, four and five coming at some point in the future, assuming that Red Ruin Softworks here made enough money from selling episode one to finance future episodes. Yes, the game is clearly inspired by Subnautica, but that's no bad thing. It's kind of like Subnautica in space, with a really dirty sense of humour. <laughs> and I like it. So I'm very much looking forward to the next episode whenever it's released on Steam. I hope you guys have enjoyed episode one and who knows maybe this will be an ongoing video series in the meantime hope you enjoyed today's video and as always take care and i'll catch you next time